In this screencast, I'm going to talk about um, a particular type of queue. Um, and by that I mean a queue that looks something like this. So we have a certain amount of servers. So here, for example, there's three of them, but a certain amount that we're going to call C. So in this case, C is three. And um, there's a buffer size. So there's a, there's a total amount of room in, um, in our system. So for example, uh, here we have a room for four people in the queue and three people in service, so K is seven. Right? Now, there, this is one type of queue, it's a very standard type of queue, and there's a notation called Kendall's notation for describing a queues like this very simply. So it, it's a series of four letters, some notations have, have more letters, but, but four is often enough to describe a system. Um, the first letter just describes the uh, the way that the interarrival times are distributed. Um, so, for example, uh, they it could be a D, and that would say that they're, they're deterministically distributed, so you know that uh, customers arrive every 10 minutes with no variation whatsoever. Um, but often, the queues that are studied have M's for, for these two letters. The second letter refers to uh, the amount of time it takes to serve um, someone. Uh, and often the, these two letters are M's, which uh, which denote uh, which um, uh, wh wh which are called Markovian uh, queues, and they they, they basically um, mean that the interarrival times and the service times are exponentially distributed. The third letter is the number of servers C, and then finally the fourth letter is uh, the size of the system itself, so the buffer size. Now this can be represented by what's called um, a continuous Markov chain. And so what we have here are the states of the system. So for example, the system um, could have no one in it. And then I can have arriving, um, uh, I can go from having no one in it to having one person in it. And I can have, go from having no one in it to having two, so from one person in it to having two people in it. And this happens at a particular rate. And we call that the arrival rate. And in general, the letter lambda is used. Now, I can have up to k minus 1 people in my queue, at which point I can still have an arrival in my system, at which point I can still have an arrival, and then I get um, up to the maximum size k. So to go back to our previous picture, k was 7. Um, and and I, I can't go any further because if anyone arrives when I'm there, there's no room for them in this system. And similarly, you can have services, so going the other way. and um, the, the rate at which you, you go you go uh, you, you go down is um, at most the total service rate that you'd have which is C times mu. Yeah. With a little bit of work you can solve the Markov chain to get the probability pi i of having um, i customers in the system um, and if you if you look carefully, this pi i is defined as a function of pi naught, and and then you can simply normalize um, your 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 pi i's by solving the fact that your probabilities have to sum to one to get pi naught. What I'm now going to do is just demonstrate how this could be used in a in a simple system using Sage, which is an excellent computer package tool. So this is the Sage. Um, Interact page. Uh, it's a brilliant page where you can just upload little snippets of code. I use it uh, a lot for teaching where I just throw up little bits of code that students can view like like this one. Um, and so for example here we have this, the, this little Interact. There's a whole bunch of really good ones to take a look at. And if we click on, on that, there's a description of the problem. There's a whole bunch of code there. If you look carefully, you should recognize the, the, the formulae that we had up on the, the just now. But you don't have to. If we evaluate the code, it comes set up with a bunch of um, default parameters. But also calculates, thanks to our PIs, we can calculate the mean number in system in the system. So that'll just be the sum from i equals zero to k of i times pi i. In this particular case, we have an arrival rate of 12 customers per time period, a service rate of four customers per time period, so every server can serve uh, four customers in a particular time period. We have four servers and a total size of eight. 
then we expect to see on average uh, three and a half people in the system, and the mean length of the queue would be just uh, just above half uh, a half a person. What we can also hear is just a quick plot. We see the uh, probability distribution of the number of uh, of people in the system, so so pi n, uh, which is there. Seems like more often than not we have two or, or, or three people in the system. Now, if we if we said, all right, well, let's let's see if we can change things. So um, I want to bring in another another server, say six six servers. Well, now straight away the mean length of the queue has disappeared, and uh, this this doesn't seem to have changed much. Hopefully, you'll see that it you you might be able to notice that it that it did. But if we want to see something a bit drastic. Um, Let's say, well, what if we only had one server? Straight away, the length of the queue is now huge. Seven and a half people have to wait. Um, and we also see the, the, the seven, the, on average, there's seven and a half people in the system. Uh, six and a half people have to wait on average. And also what we see here is more often than not, the system is full. And that's just one type of consideration that you can do with some, some basic um, queuing theory. So this code is up there. I'll put a link to it in the video. Um, feel free to play around with it. And you, can, you can change various parameters to see what happens.